what's up guys and welcome back to the channel my name is Priscilla, and this video is going to be a follow-up to my previous video in which i showed you guys how to sew this stunning yellow tartan duster coat i thank you guys so much because <laughs> the response has been positive yet again and i'm really really grateful for that so if you'd like to see how i made the patterns keep watching my videos are starting to get really connected to each other meaning you have to kind of see one before you watch the other one so i use the bodies pattern and the sleeve block pattern in this video and if you haven't seen them already please go check them out before you come back here or watch it after this one because it's kind of, it's kind of easier to understand if you've already seen those ones and then this one will make a lot of sense to you if you'd like to see how I made this pattern keep watching if you are new to the fam take a seat there are several in the room five to however many you like just sit relax and enjoy if you aren't subscribed already please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more pattern tutorial and without further ado let's jump straight into this video To make this pattern, I got myself the following tools. I got my body's block, the front, the back, as well as the sleeve. I have separate videos for all of these patterns and I would link them down below. I also got some pattern paper, my pattern master, set square, marker, you know, things that would really be essential to draft patterns, scissors, tape measure, and a long ruler because I wanted this jacket to be really, really long. So you will need to take the following measurements. You need to decide how long you want the duster coat to be. And if you already have a bodice, you don't really need to worry about the other dimensions. You just need to think about how long you want your duster coat to be. So I'm going to go ahead and create my front panel. I'm going to tape down my front bodice onto some fresh pattern paper. I decided to get a wider one because it turns out the one I put earlier on was not just wide enough for what I wanted it to do. So I'm just tracing around the arm curve, around the shoulder and around the front neckline. We're going to ignore the dart and that curve that the bodies normally has because we're just going to create an A-line silhouette for this duster coat. I worked with a free form A-line meaning I just put down my ruler and drew out as I was led but just be conscious of how wide your fabric is. Some fabrics are 120, some are 150. If your fabric is not that wide, you would have problems when it comes to placing the pattern on your fabric. So I was lucky because the fabric was wide enough to take the spread I went for. So once I got to the edge of the bottom, I didn't just sort of do like a straight point. I decided to curve it in a little bit because I didn't want the corners of the hem to be sharp. So I'm going ahead to mark 50 inches as the hem because that is how long I wanted my duster to be. I didn't want it too long that I would be stepping on it, but I wanted it just around my ankle. So I'm going in and I'm drawing my hemline as well as just refining those lines around the neck and around my arm curve using my pattern master and a marker pen. Since I started using this marker pen, I just found it easier for people to understand what I do in my pattern tutorials. So once that is done, I'm going to add a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around, around the shoulder, around the neck and around the center front as well because we're going to be putting a facing around the center front. As for the hem, I added one centimeter but when I made this jacket, I realized one centimeter was not even enough so if you want to make it more go ahead and do that so I'm going ahead to mark on my notches my waistline because when it's time to join the facing onto this actual front panel those notches would help you know like midpoint and would be easier for you to connect things together so I'm also adding my grain line, my center front and annotations just to know what this pattern is. So you need to cut two pieces for the front and for the back you just need one piece. So this is what the front looks like right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out before working on the front facing. Moving on to the front facing, you would need to trace around that front neckline, the center front and the shoulder points onto fresh pattern paper as well as important notches such as the waistline and a notch connecting the facing to the front. So I'm just going in to create dashed lines. You can trace straight away with your pattern master or your French curve, whatever you have really works. But I have created a notch here because it just makes it easier for me to know, okay, that is the point where those two pieces should connect. So I'm just going in to refine my lines using my pattern master. So this is the front neckline. 
I am drawing in that notch I marked on earlier on and I'm drawing in my shoulder. So I decided to make the shoulder 10 centimeters wide and just freely draw the inner line. So it was mostly a straight line from the shoulder all the way to the hem. I drew in my waistline as well and written any annotations that I needed before drawing in my grain line. So the grain line should be parallel to your center front because that is the direction in which the pattern should be placed on fabric. So after I was done doing all of this for the front, I went on ahead and I cut it out using a scissors and I just placed it on the front to see if it actually works, if I wanted to make any changes and as at now it looks really really good. I just checked if the notches really matched and if everything was in point. So I cut the front facing shorter than the actual front because when you have to fix lining it's a whole lot easier if the facing is a little bit shorter, it's just something that I picked up from fashion school. So after that we would need to work on our back panels of this pattern and because I had changed the shape of the bodies, I traced off the silhouette of the front onto the back especially when it comes to the side seam because you want those side seams to match and because I don't want to seam on the center back, I shifted it a bit outwards because I'm going to cut that back on a fold. So for the back neckline I marked 1 inches down and drew in a relatively shallow neckline because you want your back to be higher than the front so the neck doesn't constantly fall off when you have it on. So after I've drawn this I just wrote down that was my center back point and then I went ahead to trace around the arm curve using my back bodice. So this was the only time I really used the back bodice for this particular part of the project. So I just traced around that shallow curve that the back normally has, refined it with my pattern master and drawing my notches. We want the front to match the back so I'm just going to trace the side seam of the front onto the back pattern and transfer the waist notch as well so they are really precise and when you cut this out they work hand in hand. So I've cut out the back pattern, I've added seam allowance. Because we trace around the front, you don't need to add seam allowance outside of that line that we already traced. You add the seam allowance inside of that line. I added my grain line, my waistline point, indicating that you have to cut the back on the fold. We don't want to seam in that center back, except you want to be more creative with your back and then you can add a seam or add a dart or a pleat. Whatever you like to do is really up to you. I just said to keep it really simple and basic because the fabric is quite eccentric. So for the back facing, we're going to sort of repeat the same process we did for the front. You trace around the back neckline, you trace the shoulder, and then you trace down the center back because the facing is going to be cut on the fold as well. And you ensure that that shoulder width is 10 centimeters because you want to connect the front facing to the back facing. Therefore, that shoulder width should be the same. So I went ahead and I marked a 10 centimeter point for the back facing, marked 10 centimeter on the center back. It doesn't really have to be 10 cm, I just wanted it to be symmetrical. That was why I made sure that the center back was 10 cm long and the shoulder was 10 cm wide. And then I connected those two points together on sort of a curved shape because when the facing is nice and curved, it just looks really nice to the eyes. I don't know how to explain it. I'm just going ahead to refine my dashed lines before creating the curve that sits on the bottom of the back facing. Going in now to write annotations such as center back, how many pieces I need, what exactly this pattern is, and adding my green line as well because that's really important to me. And once I'm done adding all of these information, I'm going to cut it out of this piece of paper so I can use it. These are the number of patterns I ended up with. I ended up with four because I didn't have to make a sleeve anymore. I already had a sleeve pattern. I will link that video down below so you can check it out as well. But it was a relatively simple pattern to make. The only difference here is you just make the bodies wide and long according to your desire. Make your facings, make your sleeve if you don't have one already and you're done. If you would like to make a collar, that's up to you. But I decided to keep it really simple because I wanted this dust circle to be a layering piece and not like an outerwear option. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. However, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
comment down below if you have any suggestions questions or ideas and until my next video keep being creative and i hope i continue to inspire you bye